You see, forgiveness is one of the most powerful things you can have in any relationship. And it is paramount in any relationship you're going to have with another person. Paul here speaks of something so much different. Paul here speaks of mercy and forgiveness to the people that betrayed him. When everybody left him, and he had the opportunity to say the same thing that he said about Alexander. May the Lord repay them for not standing with me and standing up for the gospel. In my darkest hour, they all left. And instead, he says, may the Lord forgive them. May the Lord not repay them. Do you understand the power that you have as a Christian? The power to forgive or not to forgive. God gives it to you. And he says it here in John chapter 20, verse 23. He says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is a perfect example of what's happening in Paul's life right here. He shakes the dust off of his feet to one person, but to others, he says, no, may the Lord forgive them for what they've done. You see, forgiveness is one of the most powerful things you can have in any relationship. And it is paramount in any relationship you're going to have with another person. Because when it comes to your relationships with other people, they're going to hurt you. And you're going to hurt them. You're just people, right? So you have to have forgiveness. Otherwise, it just builds up and builds up and builds up, and you have this bitterness that starts to eat you alive. Your unforgiveness will eat you alive. The other person might just be going about their life, but it will eat you alive. That's why Jesus said, I don't know if I pulled this verse or not, but he said that if you forgive someone, your sins will also be forgiven you. But if you don't forgive someone, then your sins will be held accounted to you. He's saying it's your responsibility to forgive. Are you the one who can grant forgiveness? No. The Lord grants forgiveness. But he's saying he wants your heart to be like his. He wants you to see like he sees. He wants you to forgive people when they're unforgivable. He wants you to love people when they're unlovable. Because you're going to have to in your relationships as a Christian. In any relationship. I mean, your relationship with your spouse. Remember like when you first got together? And everything was all exciting and new. And so you loved everything about them, even the bad things that they did. You know, like they like leave their dirty dishes in the sink and you'd be like, oh, that's so cute. They left their dishes. I'll do it for them. <laughs> or like they leave their dirty clothes on the floor. Oh, I'll pick it up for them. <laughs> right? And everything was so exciting. You were so excited to be able to serve another person and to show your love in that way. You'd be all doing the dishes, right? Putting them away, like dancing around the kitchen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you were excited about the whole thing. But then what happens is you get like a year or two down the road in your relationship and that person hurts you. And now you have this open wound and because you have this open wound that you're not healing from because you're not forgiving them, it allows the bitterness and resentment to build up in your life. And so all the things you used to love about them, you hate about them now. You're like, oh, they left the dishes in the sink again. I guess they think that I'm going to do it. Or left their laundry on the floor again. I guess I'll pick it up for them. Isn't that how it happens? If you allow the bitterness to come into your life, it will eat you alive. God doesn't desire that you would have that type of relationship. 
Because the problem isn't that you have this unforgiveness and bitterness. That's not the first problem. The first problem is you haven't prioritized your relationship with Jesus Christ above your relationship with that person. Number one. Because if you had prioritized your relationship with Jesus Christ above all other relationships, then that relationship and every other relationship that you're in doesn't mean as much anymore. You don't look for your complete fulfillment and satisfaction from that person because you're already completed, completely fulfilled in Jesus Christ. You know when people say, oh, you complete me. No. You can't be completed in another person. You can't be. You can only be completed in Jesus Christ. Only. And so the problem is, you're putting an unrealistic expectation on the other person. Because they're just a person. And yet, because they were so perfect to you at first, you expect them to still be perfect all their life. They're not perfect just like you're not perfect. This may be news to some of you, but you're not perfect. Your spouse isn't perfect. Your friends aren't perfect. Your parents, your kids, they're not perfect. They're people. Jesus Christ though, he's perfect. He's the perfect spouse. He's the perfect husband. He's the perfect friend. He's the perfect brother. He's the perfect father. He's all those things. When your relationship is healthy with him, it changes all your other relationships. Because now, all your other relationships just become like the cherry on top, you know? Because you already have the whole cake with Jesus. You got the whole thing there. Whipped cream and icing and the whole shabam. And so anything you get from anybody else only adds to that, but it can't detract from it. Nobody, nothing that anybody else does can detract from the love that Jesus will give you and the fulfillment that Jesus will give you. It can only add to it when it's in right priority. You're perfectly fulfilled. He completes you. You are a complete person in him to focus on him and to allow him to be the Lord of your life is gonna change everything for you. Now, even when a person hurts you, even when your spouse hurts you and you don't even feel like making the bed, they get out of bed and they just race off and they leave all the chores to you and you're like, mm, I'm not gonna do it. Oh, what, you've never felt that way? It's just me? I know you felt that way. Yeah. Hold on, I'll just let the Holy Spirit work here. We'll, we'll feel the conviction rise in the room here. You felt that resentment for your spouse. You felt that resentment for people close to you. What changes though, is when you do everything as unto the Lord. It changes everything in your relationship because it's now no longer based on the other person, the other imperfect person. It's based on the perfection of who God is and who he is to you. Because now you want to serve the perfect person. And since he hasn't hurt you, but he's given you eternal life, everything changes. Everything at home changes. Everything with your friends, your acquaintances, at your job, everything changes because you're no longer doing things for the other person. You're doing it for the Lord and he will reward you. Will you put that back up for me? Colossians 3.23. That's, that's the most beautiful part of it. Should be number one on the list. As to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the reward of the inheritance. You're not going to receive it from another person. You're receiving it from the Lord. And so now you can think about it like this. 
When you don't want to make your spouse dinner anymore, you go, hmm, if Jesus was here, what would I make him for dinner? Or if you're at your job and your boss hurts you and you don't feel like working for your boss, hmm, if I was working for Jesus, how would I do this thing that I'm doing right now? If you're making the bed, seriously, this comes to my mind when I'm making the bed. I'm t I told you, it'll change your life. When I'm making the bed and I throw the pillows up there and it's good enough for me and the girl I go with, I'm like, that's good enough. And then I see something sticking out the side and I go, instantly conviction. I'm like, would the Lord be happy with this or not? Hmm. I'm like, dang it. Go back, fluff them all up. <laughs> Who are you serving? When you're serving the Lord, things are different. You will get rewarded for all the little things. How do you want to be rewarded? Because if you do things halfway for him, he'll reward you halfway too. Do you want to be rewarded halfway or do you want to be rewarded fully? That's all I'm saying. If he's going to reward you for these things, how do you want to be rewarded? I want to be rewarded in the fullest. It's not going to matter to me at that point, but I want the Lord to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Not to say, oh, you did an okay job. Yeah, I'll give you a good servant. That's it. You know? You see what I'm saying? How do you do things? Make the bed like you would make it for the Lord. Do the dishes like you would do them for the Lord. Have integrity. Drive like you're driving for the Lord. That would change the world right there. In this state, California, good Lord Almighty. If everybody drove like the Lord was watching them, man, this would be a different place. Here's the thing, Christian. He's called you to be that example to people. You think the world's going to be an example to Christians of what they should be like? No. As Christians get more lenient and more lax with their integrity, the world gets way more lax with their integrity to the point that they don't even have it anymore. But if a Christian has integrity, other people see that integrity and they feel the conviction when they don't stop at a stop sign. When they're doing 20 over the speed limit. That's not an exaggeration either. Live for the Lord. Be an example to other people. Be the conviction that this world needs.